for trading just closed there for the first work day of the week. Uh, well, we'll be bringing up market editor F. Young Ekop to bring us up to speed with the trading pattern for the day. But just in, Nigeria's inflation rate plunges sharply to 11.22% for the month of June. Also, the federal government gets India's $100 million loan for broadband projects. Director General Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, uh, Muda Yusuf, says the CBN's lending policy will normalize credit markets. China's foreign trade maintained stable growth in the first quarter of 2019. Our focus on the show today is central bank's plan to revive the poultry industry in the country. And of course, we'll be looking at this figures just coming out, inflation figure is out. Let's see how it plays out. It's a week of figures. A lot of figures have been expected this week. PMI and all of it coming up from the regulatory body. Nigeria Bureau of Statistics and also from the Central Bank of Nigeria. We'll be breaking all of them down for you on the show. Welcome, it's Business Nigeria. The Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry says the lending policy of the Central Bank of Nigeria will control the credit markets and boost economic growth and broaden the link between entrepreneurs and the banking industry. This was made known by the Director General Muda Yusuf in Lagos. Mr. Yusuf said the new policy is corrective or a corrective measure that will improve credits to the private sector. Uh, we struggled with credit access, cost of credit and tenor of funds. He said it will improve economic inclusion of more SMEs and promote economic diversification in line with the economic recovery and growth plan. Nigeria gets $100 million loan from the Indian government to boost universal internet coverage and broadband expansion. The facility was arranged by the Exim Bank of India in collaboration uh, with the Indian Commission and the Federal Ministry of Communications in Nigeria. The deal was facilitated by the immediate past Minister of Communications, Adebayo Shitu, who targets 70% uh, or targeted a 70% broadband penetration by 2021. The grant will finance the country's rural broadband network and deploy masts uh, to complement alternative power sources. Data from the NCC showed that broadband subscription was 63.2 million, while actual broadband penetration increased to 33 0.13% last month. The consumer price index, which measures inflation, increased by 11.22% in June. This is 0.18% percentage points lower than the rate recorded in May, 11.40%. Earlier, the financial derivatives company projected that the headline inflation for the month of June will increase to 11.42% from 11.40% in the previous month. This will be the third consecutive monthly increase in 2019. The increases in general price levels, uh, which is seasonally driven because of the planting season. The heavy rainfall and flooding in key regions of the country have adverse effects. The annual inflation increase with, uh, well, will be marginal as the steep rise in the monthly price index is a pointer to the buildup on inflationary pressures. This would be top on the list of policymakers at the next MPC meeting this month. To the manufacturing sector, the PMI in the month of June stood at 57.4 indices points, which indicates expansion in the sector for the 27th month, uh, consecutive, for the 27th consecutive month. The PMI for May showed increased by 0 0.1 points to 57.8 index points from 57.7 index points in April out of 14 uh, subsector surveyed, 12 reported growth in the review uh, month in the following order. Transportation, uh, petroleum, coal products, cement, food, beverage, tobacco, and others. The non-metallic the non minerals products and primary metal sector recorded declines in the period of review. Let me turn to the Chief Executive Officer of Kauri Assets Limited, Mr. John C. Chuku. He joins me via Skype. Ah, hello, Mr. Chuku. Yeah, hi, uh, so good afternoon. Well, good. It's good to have you join us this Monday. It's 11.22%. It's official for the month of June. What do you make of this figure compared what, to what we had last month and projections that have been on before now? Well, for me, it's actually um, uh, a relief that we have to saw 
a downward movement in the rate of inflation. Um, uh, like you rightly pointed out, the uh, inflation rate in May was 11.4%, uh, and in June it came down to 11.2%, a decrease in inflation rate uh, of 0.18%. Uh, um, and I have also looked at all the segments of uh, the inflationary uh, factors, and I have found that food inflation, which has had a major inflationary drive in the country, actually went down from 13.79% to 13.52%. The core inflation, which is all item inflation, less food inflation, food food items, volatile food items, also decreased from 9% to 8.8%. So in effect, we saw a cross the board decrease in the rate of uh, inflation in, in June, which uh, one was actually expecting that you could actually have an uptick in inflation because June is one of the peak periods of the planting season. And uh, normally because of the impact of food inflation on the general inflation level the country, uh, so it was um, expected that there were some analysts who actually predicted that inflation would increase. But a good thing inflation has actually decreased, and food inflation, which is most important inflation factor for the families in the country, also went down from 13.79% to 13.53%. Mr. Johnson, let's look at the, price, the food index, which uh, caused increase in price of bread, cereals, meat, oil, and fats, potato, yam, and tubers. The raining season, many expect that... Uh, uh, it wouldn't be this way. What do you think is responsible for this figure? 13.56 from 13.79. I think there must have been some level of compensation in terms of uh, uh, cereal, cereals and tuber, um, particularly cereal. Uh, if you look at um, the, 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 the uh, basket of food items that actually account for the food inflation, you realize that the major component that actually went up in the previous month uh, well, we are normally normally the instances of uh, too bad because of uh, planting season. But interestingly, uh, we saw across the board we saw an improvement um, in, in food inflation. One could actually say uh, the level of uh, dis displacement we saw the previous month may have moderated, um, where farmers couldn't go to their farm uh, in previous months. Uh, but the most important thing is that. On, on an average level, on a general level, we saw a correction that was in inflation across uh, each other or the basket. So, M M Mr. Johnson, what, what are we supposed to continue doing now? Is there something we're doing right at this time? Uh, what are we supposed to do to make sure this comes down? What are your expectations? The next MPC meeting, what do you think they should be looking at when they come around that table to discourse? Well, I think we also have to avoid the euphoria of feeling that because inflation went down from 11.4% to 11.22%, that we have done something uh, extraordinarily well. Uh, the outlook inflation is actually still uh, negative in the coming months. Remember that the government is yet to implement the uh, minimum wage, uh, which will have a direct impact on monetary supply and has a direct impact on inflation. Uh, the issues about the uh, product price is still there. The government has admitted that it's a certain minimum product and there's a lot of pressure for it to that sort of That would bring additional pressure on price level. Then you also have to deal with the issue of the price of uh, 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 the electricity tariff, which the government has been considering adjusting to the market cost reflective. Uh, so in the near term outlook for inflation is that inflation will actually move not forward. Mr. Johnson, touch on state's profile before you leave. Let's round it up on that note. Bauchi State 15.40%. We have Kebi State 14.73% and Kajuna State 13.91%. Let's look at some of these figures. What, what does it mean? Uh, how does it come to you? Well, the state uh, said, uh, inflation figures are largely driven by food inflation and the, the cost of transportation around, uh, of moving goods that are not producing from those states, producing those states to those states. So um, where you have a predominance of food production where the, whatever is consumed in that locality is produced in that locality and there's minimal transport costs added to it, you realize those states enjoy relatively low inflation rates. But where you have the food item consumed, they are either imported food items or uh, the, the huge cost of transition taking them from the seaports or other states to those states, then you have a high rate of food inflation within those states. So it all depends on the nature of what is produced in each state 
and the consumption of uh, business and great all right, Mr. Johnson Chukuchim, Executive Officer, Kari Assets Limited, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us on Business Nigeria this Monday. Moving on now, uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria is extending support to poultry farmers in Nigeria. It wants to introduce a university-based poultry revival program to boost outputs in the sector. Reports from Food and Agriculture Organization states that the poultry industry contributes about 25% of uh, Nigeria's agricultural GDP, but the country's local poultry production cannot meet demands. An FAO report in 2010 states that Nigeria produces above 550,000 metric tons of poultry meat per annum and 790,000 uh, of eggs. Well, let's make more sense of this. I have in the studio an agricultural expert, and uh, I know he's also uh, a member, a top member of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Prince Wale Oyekoya. It's great to have you, Prince. Nice for having me. Let's start this way. I love eggs. I don't joke with eggs and chicken. What is happening? How can we improve this productivity first? Before, what's been the situation? Tell us what's been happening and all of these interventions by the central bank. What is the real picture of what uh, happens at your farm? Well, the production have not really been to what we really expected. Because I could say the local production is about 30 percent right now. That is why we are trying to the federal government to really come to the aid of the farmers, especially with the importations of some of these poultry products that is coming to the country. There is no way local farmers are able to compete with some of these imported uh, poultry products like the eggs, um, chicken, and turkey. So, if we are able to increase on our our production. So many factors really lead to it that why we have lower production in ex production and chicken. You can see the problem with the herdsmen and the farmers. It's a major factor. Number two, the climate change, which happens to everywhere in the world, not only in Nigeria. Number three, funding is a key. Number four, control. There's no price control. So everybody just brings everything to the market. And now that we are introducing some of these multinational agro, uh, agro processing, like all land that is coming to the market, to me, it shouldn't be a threat, but if there's no playing level between the local contents and the multinational, it's going to be a problem. Where you are giving a waiver to some of these multinational industries to bring their own materials to the country, and the local producers are, cannot even be able to have the advantage of bringing some of these things like the maize and the soya bean and the granite cake that, that is really components of what we use for the feed. Please. So it's, it's going to be a problem. Because look at the price of eggs. Now, instead of it coming down, it keep on going up. So, and with what we've been discussing about the inflation, it's really coming up. And if all this thing, with what the central bank is trying to do to introduce some funds, I hope the money really gets to the hands of the real farmers. That way you'll be able to see the effect in the market. Now, when they, you talk about what you mentioned now, very importantly, that money getting to where it's supposed to get yes. to. We've seen interventions in rice. Mm -hmm. We've seen intervention lately going to palm oil. Yeah. Interventions going to um, courting, Cortings. all sectors yeah. of the, the central bank has always continued to reiterate this mm -hmm. fact that the, the focus of this administration is to move the downtrodden people. Everybody has to be active. Now, what's been the process before now when these kind of distributions come up? Say maybe government want to make funds available. How accessible? Are these funds to your members? Tell us a little bit about what you've experienced see, as I a see, player. I still put the blame on the doorstep of the central bank by playing cash 22. When you talk of the importation of some of these things that come to the country, who are put the form M's? It's come to the bank, right? It's, it's either through the commercial bank to the central bank. Yes, these funds are not really getting to, to the hands of the real farmers. The CBN are making the same mistake, not just giving the commercial banks to give money to the, to the farmers. These commercial banks are not ready to give the money to the farmers. They rather give it to the high risk of the people that will borrow the money at a very high interest rate. It's given to them on 7%, on 5 or 7%. By the time it gets to the hands of the commercial banks, if it's given to the real farmer at the age of 22, 28, which is extremely high. There's no farmers, because the profit margin of a farmer is plus minus 10%. So if you are able to go to the commercial banks and get a loan of 26 or 28%, how are you going to make a profit? And it's going to affect the production. So I'm, I'm, we have the, the, of the opinion that there are stakeholders on this the Portra Association of Nigeria, the CBN knows them, the federal government knows them, the Federal Minister of Agriculture knows them. Why can't you have a roundtable discussions with these 
uh, stakeholders. And by this, we'll be able to know where the money is going and not only just giving, out to the, giving money to the farmer. What about inspection? Are, the, are, you really, uh, are you really getting to the farms to see that, yeah, these people are really using the farm uh, the, the money to Forms. what is being sent for. So there are so many interventions going out there, but it's not really getting to the real farmers. Let's look at other issues affecting poultry production, you know, disease, you know, at times we heard of bird flu at a particular time. I think yeah. that is gone now. Uh -huh. uh, how, how, how challenging has it really been, you know, uh, being a farmer and everybody wants to become a farmer, but it's not really easy. Tell us what's really been happening with regards what? to diseases, how you've been able to control all of When this. you talk of diseases in the poultry, it's a, it's a recurrent something. There's no way you could totally eliminate it, not only in this country. And if you look at the kind of birds we have now, there's something we call GPS, which is uh, grandparent stocks. After that is parent stock, which is the peers. Most of the GPS we have now, they are being old, 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 approved by the Federal Ministry of Agriculture during the Obama on Just Regime. So we need to change some of this, and we need to do research and development of what is really good for our own climate, not depending on the GPS, which is the grandparents talk from other countries like India or Chinese. We have different climates. So if the federal government is putting embargo for all these parent stocks coming into the country, it's a problem. So the little people that are able to have, maybe the multinational industry that are able to have this thing, they monopolize it. And with the price of the day or sheet they are giving to farmers, it's extremely high. Not to talk of the feed to use to feed some of this bear. That is why you see that in the market, some of these um, poultry products are very expensive because of the way we got some of these materials. And the disease you are talking about, some of them wipe out some of these farmers. And where is NAIC? This is why the NAIC are supposed to come with the Federal Insurance uh, Corporation to be able to make sure that you pay the premiums for to some of these farmers. That way, if you are affected with all these diseases, you can easily cash up with the money and go back to the, to the farm. But it's not the case. So that's why we are telling the federal government, if the insurance should not be limited to only the NAIC. What about the other insurance company? Spread it over. That way, it's going to be the... Monopol uh, it's, it's not going to be monopolized by the night. Almost finally now, Prince, let, let's be very factual now. We've talked about food security for a long time. And we've talked about budgetary allocations to the agricultural sector. Yes, Can we really feed ourselves in Nigeria if we continue at this pace? There's no way we could. As I said, we have 30% of our production. And that is why you see some, some of this thing being important to the country. And this is where some of the foreign reserves are supposed to be. We call it reserves. It's not supposed just to be meant to be buying all this kind of host. It's supposed to be able to bring equipment for farmers or for the manufacturing uh, industries. But it's the other way around. And as I'm talking today, 80% of the food we see eat in this country are still being imported. It's a shame on the federal government. It's a shame on Nigeria as a whole. And look at the population that is exploding. We're over 200 million. We like it or not. In 2050, the, uh, the, the World Health Organization and the United Nations that we are going to surpass America. America population is about 340 million right now. So our population is going to jump to almost about 500 million. Are we really prepared to feed this huge population that is coming to our face. So that's where the federal government and the state government really need to come. Don't leave everything to the federal government. What about the state government? They can use agriculture to generate uh, uh, revenue instead of just running to the Abuja to go and collect some of this uh, uh, food stamp. I call it food stamp. Because if you go to the central to go and pick money to pay for your salary, to me, it's just like a company borrowing money to pay for <laughs> the salary. How are you going to keep up? So you're supposed to put money on capital expenditure, not on the recurrent expenditures. And that is why most of the money we have today are being channeled to service the government. 70% is extremely too high. And that is why nothing is being worked out in Nigeria as of today. Uh, as much as I, I, I see trying to even get the youth to shift focus yes. to the agricultural sector, a lot of challenges seems to be scaring them away. Because mm -hmm. even at the moment, agriculture in Nigeria is not mechanized. Definitely. And that is something that remains very important. It's very scary. How do we mechanize farming? It's How do we make it so attractive for everybody to be interested? You said it all through mechanizations. Because you cannot expect most of the youth of social media of nowadays to go to the farm with cutlass and hoe. So mechanization, we'll be talking about mechanization. Even if it is only every geopolitical zone that could be mechanized, a lot of things will be able to come in through the jobs, through the, through the uh, food security, and at the same time to increase the revenue of estates. So definitely mechanization is the, key, is the key. Not really too much. We are not expecting too much from the federal government. But there are so many little, little equipment that could be 
that they could be fabricated through our uh, polytechnics and all this uh, school of the te technology. I didn't really funded this technology to be able to bring out some of these little, little equipment that the farmers could be used. Maybe like tillers, planters, and, and spraying the insecticides. So a lot need to be done by the government and to be able to promote the food security in this country. Prince Wai Olekoya, thank you very much for joining us on Business Nigeria, sharing your thoughts with us very importantly. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Well, before we go, let's tell you that crude oil prices have shown signs of recovery at key trade centers, holding the hope of better earnings for many African petroleum producers. This is happening as the International Energy Agency gives indication that the volume oil for sale may actually increase in 2020. The agency hinges the glut uh, on overproduction of shale crude by the United States, believing that it will have significant impact on markets. Issues around shale oil continues to become a threat for countries depending on crude oil proceeds like Nigeria, Angola, and the rest of others. It's time to take diversification more seriously. That's our show today. Thank you very much for watching. Let's do the same time tomorrow as we bring you up to speed with the latest in the world of business. Enjoy the rest of your day.